What's good wrestling fans? Gilbert Blaze is back with another video. Now, on this video, I will be talking about One Night Stand, giving you my predictions. But first, I have to read this little statement. Dear WWE, this following video isn't intended for copyright purposes. So, if you don't like that, you can kiss my ass. Alright. I'm not worried about this video being taken out. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. Because, as you all know, my Backlash video was taken out a while ago. And I haven't did no other prediction videos or reviews for the, the last pay per was with Judgment Day. But, anyway, that's done over with. Let's get with the current card. I gotta say, this weekend is going to be great for wrestling. You have ROH, Take No Prisoners, coming on tonight. One Night Stand on Sunday. And then next weekend is going to be Slam anniversary. So, looking pretty good for wrestling right now. But focusing on one night stand, I gotta say, at first, I was skeptical of the two week build up. And you know, WWE never really done that before, having a pay per view after another pay per view right off the bat. But, you know, the outcome of this is it was a really good build up. They basically used Judgment Day as a stepping stone for one night stand. And WWE did a really good job at this. So, you know, more power to WWE right there. Now, let's get with the card. First off, the match. That I want to talk about that I really don't really care too much about, so I'm gonna get out the way real fast. Jeff Hardy versus Umaga, ball counts anywhere. This match was just thrown together out of nowhere. Obviously, Jeff Hardy should be going over here. Umaga once again is gonna to job to him for what reason? I don't know why. But it's looking like Umaga's going to smack down anyway, so look for Jeff Hardy to win. He'll probably gonna do a really sick crazy bump, swan time off of maybe a ladder or a balcony or something like that. Something really cool, so yeah, expect a really good high spot as a finisher. So, in that sense, I'll be looking forward to that. But other than that, I don't see no point to this match. They're not going to continue no feud. This is just obviously to get Jeff Hardy over on a pay-per-view match again. So now, on to the next match. The I Quit match, Molina versus Beth Phoenix. I gotta say, I have never seen an I Quit match with the ladies before in the WWE. This shocked me, and this really impressed me, and this tells me one thing. They are paying attention to the knockout division, and they're trying to get better, like the knockout division remains to be seen. But I will give the WWE their due here. Having an I Quit match should be interesting. I'm hoping this match goes like at least 10, 15 minutes, because I Quit matches usually don't go really short. So look for Mickey James, hopefully, to be at a ringside in the announcer's table. And I'm looking for Beth Phoenix to win this match. I just can't see Beth saying I Quit. Now, Melina got that submission hole called California Dreams, as, we, as we've seen she did on Jillian this week on Raw. But I really can't see Melina making Beth say, I quit. So give this match to Beth Phoenix. Hopefully she wins, and she'll fight Mickey James at the next pay-per-view, Night of Champions. And we'll see what happens there. But I'm definitely looking forward to this match. I can't wait to watch it. Now, third match. The first blood match, JBL versus John Cena. Gotta say, this is another few that I really don't really care about. This feud was just kind of thrown together really fast. You know, Cena was making his movie, and then he just threw him into the match with JBL at Judgment Day for, like, no apparent reason. They're not, even, they're not even fighting for, like, no more contendership. So, hopefully, the right person will go over, and that is JBL. Now, yes, I'm not a JBL fan. Could care less about him, but he does have great mic skills, and he does bring great heel heat. So, if Triple H needs another heel opponent, it should be JBL next. So that means JBL should go over in this match. But John Cena is kind of hard because Cena jobbing on a pay-per-view is very rare to begin with. But then again, Cena hasn't really been doing much lately ever since he lost the title and he lost at WrestleMania. And he also lost at, um, which was, I think, Backlash. Yeah. And so Cena hasn't really, really been doing much. So... If he does win again over JBL, then I really think that's a big mistake because they got to put JBL over as a major heel that's going to contend for Triple H's title down the line. So I'm hoping JBL wins this match. Next match I want to talk about, the ECW match. The Singapore came match with the, a five-way, basically, with uh, Big Show, John Morrison, CM Punk, Chavo Guerrero. Uh, who else? Let me, see. Let me get my, my notes out here because I always keep forgetting. Yeah, Punk, Morrison, Dreamer, Chavo Guerrero, and Big Show. I'm expecting Big Show to win this match. I think a Big Show King feud would be quite interesting. These two have fought in the past before. They're also former tag team champions. 
Sho, as you all know, has lost a lot of weight. So he's in really good condition right now. Kane, I don't think, is in the best shape of his life right now. But I think this would be a great big man feud for Sho and Kane to go at it. Now, in my heart, I really want to see Time of Dreamer win. But there's no way Time of Dreamer is going to win. They just keep making him a jobber. But it would be nice to see Time of Dreamer win the ECW title one more time before he retires. WWE, are you listening to us fans out there? Let Tommy win the title. But as of now, Big Show will be winning this match. I'm hoping CM Punk don't job in this match again because he's been jobbing like crazy. But he really doesn't need the ECW title. So Big Show will win this match, hopefully. And then he will go on to fight Kane at Night of Champions. And I'm guessing Big Show might win the title there. But it should be an interesting match. Should be a good hardcore style type of match. So we'll see what happens there. Now, next match I want to talk about. Let's see. Mm, 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 mm. Ah, the stretcher match. How can I forget that? Batista versus Shawn Michaels. Now, this match is interesting because I've liked the build up to this match. It's been going on now for almost a month and a half. We still don't know who is a heel and who is a face. That's what intrigues me the most about this match. Batista been acting kind of heelish. Shawn Michaels did some heelish moves by pretending to have a bad leg. Jericho, when he fought Michaels, it's kind of hard. Like, as you saw on Raw last week, or this week, he basically, you know, got himself counted out, kept doing the walls of Jericho on the outside floor, but then he helped Shawn Michaels after the match. So it's like between JB, um, Jericho, Batista, and Shawn Michaels, we don't know who's the heel and who's the face. Now, I've been wanting Batista to turn heel for a long time now because, like I've been saying a while ago, Batista's character is very old now. He needs to freshen up his character, and one way to do it is to make him heel. So, I am expecting Batista to somehow go over in this match. He will turn heel. He will brutalize Shawn Michaels because the stretcher match is a brutal matchup. So, for two faces to go ahead in the stretcher match is kind of weird. The stretcher matches are brutal. So look for maybe Jericho to interfere, but other than that, Batista will definitely go over, and I've been predicting for a while now that Batista will be going to, to Raw again, and this would make perfect sense if he takes out Shawn Michaels. So look for Batista to definitely win his match and to definitely finally turn heel. I hope so, WWE, make the right move. Now, I want to talk about the TLC match, Undertaker versus Edge. Now, I love Undertaker and Edge, they have been fighting way too much now, so this will definitely be the last match of their feud. This will end their feud because if Taker lose, he will get fired. Now, I'm predicting that Taker will lose, get fired. Now, the situation was either he's going to get fired from SmackDown or fired from WWE in general. I'm predicting he's going to lose the match and get fired, but then during the draft, he's going to come to Raw and be a Raw Superstar, which would make perfect sense because Undertaker needs to move. He's done everything on SmackDown. He has beaten so many people on SmackDown. There's nothing more for Undertaker to do. Bring him to Raw. Let him feud with Triple H. That would be a great feud. Hey, even with the Dead Man's power backstage, he can try to neutralize Triple H and um, you know stick up for the young guys too because as we all know, Undertaker likes to put people over and he's like the dad backstage and everyone goes to him because he's so respect respectable so Undertaker in the Raw will be a great move so I'm hoping Edge will win the title Undertaker go to Raw and this is the end of their feud it's been a great feud but yes they need to end this now because it's getting stale it's them fighting every pay-per-view so yes Undertaker will lose this match I predict and he will go to Raw so stay tuned for that should be interesting. Now, on to uh, the main event, I guess. Triple H versus Randy Orton in a last man standing match. Now, here is another feud, in my opinion, that has gotten stale because they keep fighting so many times with Triple H being victorious nine out of ten times. So hopefully, this will be the ending of their feud. Triple H will definitely go over in this match. If Randy Orton wins, I will be shocked. I will be ecstatic, but I will be shocked.